Hey everybody, I am going to begin today's floss tube by showing you this cute little cabin that I am moving into, possibly, maybe, and I'll get into that later, but uh, I just want to show you this. So, a couple of things that still have to be taken out, like the old mattress on the front porch. So, this is the front porch, and um, I'm going to go inside. I haven't been in there yet since he has moved out. You can see it needs a little bit of TLC here. Pressure washing, gutters cleaned, things like that. So we're gonna go in. And we're gonna find out what's going on inside. Now we just had a hurricane, so that didn't help with like all the leaves outside. I don't even know what key opens this. So we're going to keep trying. All right. That's not those. Maybe we'll forward ahead here. Let me try these. The suspense of it, right? This is a channel about cross stitch. We're starting out with entry to the cabin. And here we go. Hey guys, uh, it's been a while. Uh, I know I led you into the cabin and that's where I am now to see the rest of it. I'm putting it in a separate video. So that was just like a little sneak peek teaser, but I want it to keep the video separate so it's not um, mixed in with a cross stitch. So this is gonna be a really quick video. Um, I'll give a little bit of life update afterwards. Um, you may hear helicopters. We are um, in search and recovery search and rescue. I think now they said the rescue is pretty much, well, I guess there's still some rescue because some people are trapped up in the mountains. Their roads and bridges washed away and they have to airlift them out with Black Hawk helicopters and different things and they're airlifting supplies into those that are stranded. Um, people are out on four wheelers, four by four, um, what are they called? Side, side by sides and um, just rescuing people and taking them supplies. So you may hear some helicopters, but I'm gonna try to make this short because I don't really have a lot to show you. Um, I picked up my mom the other day because her um, assisted living facility was evacuated. So I'll get into that more, but just wanted to show you a um, little bit of what I've done. So this is Pineberry Lane pattern and it's called Rot By My Hand and it was on her, um, her website, she sells on her own website, pineberrylane.com, I think is the name of it. And I'm not sure if I changed any colors. I didn't bring anything with me except like this to show you. Um, this is a, a frame. I think I had it myself or Lois brought it to me, my friend Lois, I'm not sure, but I just framed it and then put um, painter's tape on the back and it's got that plastic core board and a piece of um, warm and natural behind it. So that I think is my only full finish and I have one whip in my favorite bag. And this is, um, got my working copy here. It's a Brenda Gervais um, Jingle Bells it's called. Let me put it the right way. Jingle Bells. And I just felt like doing this. So, you know, you just get in the mood. I just don't really stitch in season. Sometimes I do, but I just picked up something and this is what I picked up. Let me get up. There's no chair in here. So I'm just sitting on the steps up to the loft. Um, and this is on um, stained Nate Burkus fabric, which is 36 count and it's from Joann's. It's upholstery fabric. And I think it's walnut, it's either walnut stained or coffee stained ahead of time. And I'm changing colors on that. So when I'm finished, if you want to know, it, it's almost done. It may be done tonight, um, but I went like four days with no stitching. It's been a little crazy. So as I said, um, it's a really short video. So we're only at eight minutes and that's all my cross stitch. So um, just a little life update. We are okay. Um, I live in East Tennessee and my mom lives in Western North Carolina and my brother and nephew and their families live in Western North Carolina, about a half hour from my mom. So everybody in my family is okay. Um, I did lose a friend and I'm not gonna get into that because it's too sad. Um, 
I'll just tell you real quick, she got caught in a mudslide outside her house, and um, I talked about it on Facebook a little bit, but um, I'm not going to go into it because there's just so many people that lost their lives here. So, um, they, as I said, you, you may hear a helicopter because there's still, it's crazy here. It, I'm in North Carolina, of course, over at the cabin, and this is my first time to come in. Um, since the guy moved out but there's still some stuff here and you'll see that in the other video which i will put the link down in the description box um so anyway it's i just wanted to come in and do some measurements and things it's very dirty it needs a really good cleaning um it needs some work definitely but um this is the blue paint that i bought for the kitchen cabinets it's like a blue gray it's called haven and it's um all-in-one heirloom paints, I think is the company name. So you don't have to like sand or prime or anything. You just put this um, prep stuff on it that you just brush on and I think wipe off. I haven't watched the tutorial videos yet, but it's supposed to kind of etch the cabinets so that um, the paint will stick without sanding. So, um, what else was I gonna say? I hear a helicopter coming. So. Um, I don't know if I'm going to move into the cabin. I know I'm so excited and I love this cabin, but my mom's um, assisted living evacuated the other day and she didn't want to go. Um, they took them on an army helicopter to another facility a couple hours away and because they didn't have any water. So I have everything at my house, power, water, internet, groceries, everything. Um, we have gas and over here it's kind of like, I mean, the grocery store is like letting 15 people in at a time and you have to have cash and you have to wait in line outside and so they go in one door and out the other. There's no meat, um, a lot of produce and stuff, but um, there is distribution centers all over the place. People coming in from all over the country, bringing water and supplies and food and everything. Um, it, it's crazy over here and um, it's very different than at my house. Um, in East Tennessee, We, if you saw on the news, where they rescued people from the roof of a, a hospital that was 10 minutes from my house. And that is along the river. So it flooded really bad. Um, I live a mile and a half from the river and you at my house, you would not even know anything happened. It's fine over there. So my mom didn't want to go and she called me and asked me to come pick her up. So I have her at my apartment. Um, she's here in her house now while I'm over here, but I have a one bedroom apartment. It's like 600 and 40 square feet. So it's kind of close. Um, she can't stay there indefinitely because of the, um, just the rules and the space and everything. They are letting her stay longer than, ex you know, than we're allowed because of these circumstances. Um, but it won't be like indefinitely. Some people have said that the water over here in North Carolina will take a year to get back on. Um, some people have said a month or two. Um, I don't think it's going to take even anywhere near that long because like I said, there's people here from all over the country. There are all kinds of tradesmen here. And with that much help, I know they're going to get it back up and running like they did over in Tennessee. So she's considering going back to the assisted living and selling her house. So if, and that is when they get water back um, and they bring the people back. So if they, if she goes back there, her house will be sold to help pay for the assisted living. So that means the cabin gets sold. So I'm just going to hold out for a little bit and see what happens here. Um, you know, we'll come in and clean and do some stuff, but I'm not going to start like trying to make it my own um, until I know for sure what's going to happen here. Otherwise I would just stay in my apartment in Tennessee. Um, so that's what's going on with that. Um, if you have any questions, um, put them in the comments below. Um, supplies here are like an overabundance right now. They're actually turning people away because they have nowhere to store everything. Um, they are feeding people like to churches. Like we stopped at um, the church I used to go to over here today. And there was a barbecue company serving all the workers and everybody, you know, whoever wanted a meal out in the parking lot. And then they're doing it again at six o'clock. So they're doing it every day at 12 o'clock and six o'clock. And there's just lines and lines of workers. Um, there's so many people here helping. It's incredible. And we were like looking at license plates when we were driving over and we saw California and Virginia and New Jersey and, you know, South Carolina, they're coming from all over to help. And that's just amazing. And it's just, 
appreciate it.